If you have a story you'd like to see featured on the channel, then go to mariesfield.com and send it my way. And of course, thank you. I like to play a lot of MMO games. I can get pretty competitive in them, so I've made some enemies, but also made quite a few friends. After talking to some, I ended up meeting with them and we hung out, pre-2020, to play games together, see a movie, and even went to some conventions together. Shamefully, I've even gone on a few regrettable dates that went nowhere. This story is about one guy that just couldn't take no for an answer. A few years ago, I was heavily into playing a popular MMORPG. Sometimes I like bringing smaller level people into places they wouldn't normally be able to take on so they could get better rewards. I took a group of people and after a few rounds, people were happy and thankful, some more than others, and I had one person stick around after others had left talking to me, asking how certain crafts and skills worked. Nothing unusual, and I was okay with helping him out. He added me as a friend and we moved on from there. I had to work some longer shifts the next few nights, so I didn't play for a couple days. When I did finally get a night off, I decided to play some. Not long after logging on, this guy joined the same server and came over talking to me. He was excited to see me because he had managed to grind to the point that he was up to my level. I thought it was pretty impressive at the time because he was nearly half my level. Because of this, we ended up playing a new map together and took it out pretty quickly. It was pretty fun and the guy was funny. He had plenty of quips he would throw out there so it was amusing. We also talked a lot throughout it about what we did for work. I found out that he actually lived and worked at a warehouse about two cities over from me. After playing, we had to have stayed up another hour or so just talking. We seemed to have a lot in common, so I was excited about it at the time. I ended up giving him my email so we could talk more and we really started to hit it off. Other than games, we had a lot of similar interests. For about a week, we emailed each other and decided to video chat. He looked like a pretty normal guy and definitely not someone that looked intimidating. After about a month of talking, we decided to actually meet up. It was all in public still. We went to dinner, then to a local arcade, had ice cream, and then we parted. It was actually a great night. He seemed super nervous at first, but I figured it was just because he was shy. We both agreed that we should get together again and parted ways. At this point, we had traded our phone numbers as well, so we called and texted regularly, and I was feeling really good about this one. I was honestly excited to spend some more time with him, so we set up another date. This time, it did not go as well. It started out fine. We got to the restaurant, sat down, and as I was holding the menu or going for a drink, he would reach out and grab my hand. It wasn't a big deal at first, I thought it was a sweet gesture, but as he continued, he would make it more and more difficult to pull away from. I know I ended up mentioning that his hands were cold or something to try to get him to stop, which deterred him for a bit. As we ate though, he started saying things that were really off-putting. We started talking about our plans for the future. I mentioned I had been saving up money so I could go visit my brother who was living in Japan and that I wanted to travel abroad. He seemed visibly surprised or upset by this at first, which I've seen people react like that before, so I tried explaining my reasoning and he cut me off to say something like, well, it'd be pretty difficult to travel like that with kids. I was confused by this comment because I certainly didn't have any kids. And as far as I knew, he didn't have any either. So I just laughed and mentioned, I agree. Thankfully, I don't have any, so that's not an issue for me. Without as much as a smirk, he said, well, not yet, but 
when we do, it wouldn't be doable. I first started reiterating that I didn't want kids and wasn't planning on having any when it registered in my head that he said when we have kids. So I questioned him about it. He went on about how we are required to reproduce, and that was what we were born to do. I was blown away by this because this was completely different from what we talked about prior. So being friendly, I just told him that he can definitely have kids of his own someday, but I had bigger plans in life than to be tied down to a diaper bag. His reaction told me that was not the right answer. He started going on about how it was all part of the plan. We were destined to be together and have these genius kids that would save our country. I was in shock and incredibly disappointed as he came off as a great guy, but very quickly, I knew that whatever was between us was now beaten, dead, and buried. So with that, I acted like I had a call to take and walked off to gather my thoughts. After pacing in the restroom for a few, I went back out, put money on the table for my meal, and told him I had to go. He tried stopping me and asking me what was wrong and to stay longer, but I told him I had an emergency so I started walking out. By the time I got to my car, he was hollering for me so I stopped for a second, thinking he may be just trying to say goodbye or just maybe apologizing, but that was dumb of me. No, instead he said he was sorry about what he said and rushing it, and that we could wait a few more months before we started having kids. At that point, I told him I had to go and left as he watched me drive away. A little disappointed in the outcome, I ended up going back to work the next day and tried to find a way to let him know I didn't want to see him anymore. That night, I sent him a long email telling him that since we didn't really have mutual feelings and thoughts, that it was probably best to cut ties. It hadn't even been an hour when he tried calling me, and I ignored the first one. But then he called again, so I answered it. This guy was literally pleading and begging to not end it. I explained to him that his whole thing about the kids was way out of line, and quite frankly, creepy and said that if he wanted kids, then I wasn't the person for him as my mind was not going to change. Then he started crying on the phone, apologizing for his actions, and for a minute, I believed him. Not to the point that I would try again, but that he seemed genuine. But he kept making it worse. He then calmed down and said that if I would feel better about it first, that we could get married and then start having kids. At that point, I told him, you really aren't getting it. I don't want kids at all. I don't want to marry you at all. And at this point, I don't want you in my life at all. I told him to stop calling and texting as I would not be answering anymore and hung up. He tried calling many more times, but I just ignored them. However, since he kept texting me too, I ended up just blocking his number. However, that didn't help for long. This guy then went through two more phone numbers within two weeks. Each time, I just kept blocking it. But he was persistent. One day while at work, I worked at a department store. I got a call on my walkie that someone was asking for me by name. I found this odd because I was a department manager, so customers didn't really see me, so there would be virtually no reason for one to ask for me. So as I head to the front, there he is, creepy guy, holding flowers, waiting for me. I hadn't told him where I worked, just that it was a retail store, so I have no idea how he figured it out. I asked what he was doing there and again, he went on about being destined and babies and everything and at that point, I had had enough. The kind and cool manager everyone knew at my work snapped and went off. I called the dude a freak, I told him to leave me alone, get out of my life, and never come back here or I would call the cops. His response was to drop the flowers at my feet, said I would change my mind and left. 
thankfully my staff was supportive and put up alerts in case he came back so they knew to call the cops. Unfortunately, that wasn't the last of him. I saw him in other random places like the grocery store, at the park where I jogged, at a restaurant, and mind you, he lived a few cities over, so why would he be at some of the places by me? I did end up calling the cops and asking about a restraining order, but frustratingly, they said they couldn't really do anything unless or until he actually tried something. So on the brink of giving up, I changed my number, tried to limit who I told where I was going, and was pretty much non-existent on social media or other public forums I would go on. It only got worse though. On a particular hot day, I ended up helping some people out at my work in the lawn and garden section. So as soon as I got home, I decided to get food delivered and would hop in the shower before it arrived. After I got out and was brushing my hair, I heard a knock and then someone yell, Hello? I thought this was really odd and startled me at first because I knew I didn't have any windows open because it was so hot. So I ran into the living room and noticed a lady standing there holding my food with the door wide open. Before I could say anything, she was immediately apologizing but said the door was open when she approached but didn't know what to do so she just hollered. Nothing seemed out of place or missing so I just chalked it up to me not shutting it right. My house is old and if you don't make sure to hold the doorknob a certain way, it won't latch and could swing open. So I just thought being as tired as I was, I didn't shut it right. I paid for my food, the lady left, and I sat the food on the counter to start opening it when I went to reach for a knife to cut the bag open. There was a knife missing. I looked around to see if I had used it and set it down somewhere, but my sink only had a coffee cup and spoon in it and my dishwasher was empty. I didn't know what to do or what to think, so I just let it go for the moment and headed to the living room with my food. I noticed that my phone was pretty low, so I went to my room to grab my charger. As I reached down to unplug it, that's when I found the missing knife under my bed, and that knife was being held by someone's hand. I was internally freaking out, thinking, how do I get out of this without letting them know I was aware of their presence? So I grabbed my phone and immediately called 911 as I walked out of the room slowly. However, I pretended to call my work. The conversation was something like this. 911, what's your emergency? Hey Francis, can you do me a huge favor? It's important. Ma'am, are you aware you're calling 911? Yes. Are you unable to talk? Uh, yes. There's an envelope in my office with my address on it. 123 my address. Could you drop it in the mailbox for me? I forgot to and it needs to be sent today. Do you need me to send someone to that address? Yes, please. They're on their way. I did not expect this to work, but... I was beyond thankful it did and the operator caught on pretty quickly. I went out on the porch to wait, pretending to be doing something on my phone, all while watching inside for movement. When they finally arrived, they moved quickly into my house and, after a lot of yelling and commanding, the guy was finally dragged out. To my horror, it was the same guy. I never told him where I lived. But I suppose since he saw me so many times around town that he must have followed me home one night. They also found zip ties and duct tape on him. Thankfully, that was enough to not only file a restraining order, but also was enough to press charges and put him in jail. Since then, I had my door replaced and even so, I always make sure to lock it. I also rarely see people in person that I meet online. There are definitely good people in this world, but there are also people with bad intentions. Listen to your instincts though, it's usually not wrong. And also, 
Never be afraid to call for help. Even if you can't outwardly say it, just listen carefully too and they will understand. It could save a life. This happened to me when I was around 15 in my sophomore year in high school. I played drums and band, was on the track team, and took the weights class, so I'd like to think I was semi-popular and a fit guy. I had a lot of friends and quite a few girls that had a crush on me, so I never really had a dull moment. I also tended to stay out late with my friends. We never really did anything that would get us in legal trouble, but I think we pushed our limits at times. This situation occurred one weekend when I went to my friend Dylan's birthday party. At our age, we just wanted to hang out with our friends, whereas some of our moms still thought we were kids and wanted to have a full-blown party with games and stuff. Thankfully, Dylan was able to come to an agreement with his mom. He had a party with friends and a few family members, but then we had an extra few hours after cake and ice cream to just chill. When I got there and saw a few older people, his aunt and uncle, I cringed thinking we were going to do weird pin the tail or pinata games. That's when he explained it to me. I was one of the few he invited over earlier during the family part of the party. After a few hours though, that's when more of our friends started showing up. His house was huge, at least to my younger self. He had two living rooms, which I thought was really cool because they had their Xbox and Wii set up in the back living room, as well as a karaoke machine. His older sister thought she was going to be the next American Idol star. So us kids got to be left alone while his parents and other family members stayed in the front. I had two siblings, me being the oldest, and we had a Wii that had to stay in the living room, but if someone was watching TV, then we couldn't play it or take it to my room since I had a TV in there. So with Dylan's family having a specific room to play any time, I thought he was pretty lucky. There were a few of us that showed up and stayed the whole time, that being me, Dylan of course, Cody, Jocelyn, Sydney, and her friend Ashlyn. We were taking turns playing games and watching Dylan change the wheels on his skateboard that he just got. The girls were talking to themselves quietly, but then would also talk to us briefly to make some kind of joke or ask a question. After a few and us still being kids, we were starting to get bored, but we weren't ready to leave yet, so the girls decided we should play some kind of truth or dare style game. I don't remember exactly how they did it, but it was like a combination of charades, but we put different questions or dares in like a hat, but then had to pick a name first to do it, so it was more randomized. Now, before I continue, I wanted to explain that me and Jocelyn dated very briefly. We hung out together, held hands and made out, but that was it. We didn't really click, so we both decided that we worked better as friends and called it off. Sydney was pretty cool. We had hung out before, but nothing too close. And Ashlyn, we just saw in passing, really. We were in one class together and were partnered together, but never really talked outside of that. I didn't even have her number like I did the other two girls there. Anyways, we all agreed being teens thinking we would get to show off or something, and we all started writing our questions and dares. Of course, as it would turn out, one of the questions that would come up is if you have a crush on anyone and Ashlyn got it. She said she did, and it was someone here, so insert awkward giggling from everyone. Then I got a dare to kiss someone, and the name I pulled was Ashlyn. I didn't think much of it, but she turned beet red and couldn't stop smiling and giggling. Finally, Sydney pushed her to get it over with and we did the dare and moved on. From then, her color didn't really change and I would catch her looking at me and smiling. I was a young kid, so I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me feel good about myself. 
I still didn't really know her though and what she was like so I didn't really have an attraction there. So the night continued as such, random embarrassing facts learned, a few people had to kiss others, and duet style singing together but it was an alright night. Later on, as everyone was leaving, Ashlyn gave me a big hug, nearly knocking me back, and ran out the door saying something to Sydney. As I was about to leave, Dylan made a comment to me about Ashlyn liking me. He told me that Sydney specifically asked if I was going to be there and if she could bring a friend but was told not to tell me. It was pretty obvious so I went about my night knowing I probably just made hers. I thought maybe if I got to know her that she might be my type and we could actually hit it off. Nope. Cue the stalker vibes. Since Ashlyn was in the one class, she called me over when I walked in to have me sit by her, which was fine. She looked different. She was wearing makeup, a low-cut shirt, and straightened her hair. I will say she had natural, really curly hair, like the girl from the movie Brave, which I loved and it looked great on her. So it was kind of weird seeing it straight. She tried being very open and talkative, but she wasn't used to it, so it was a little awkward, but nothing too bad. She didn't make any moves or anything, though, but I think that was her still being too shy. I told her she looked nice, but it seemed to fluster her more. When class ended, she would go talk to Sydney and whisper and giggle as I walked by. Then I started getting notes shoved in my locker through the vent. They would say different things from, you're cute, I want you, you plus me after school, things like that. It was safe to assume who it was from. It was fine, even though there were multiples a day, every single day, but then it started going over when there was one taped to the front of my locker. People were passing by, laughing and taking pictures, till I saw what it was. It was a picture of me at the track field, with hearts and love you always written on it. Like someone took a crappy picture of me on the field. It was a bit embarrassing, so I pulled it off, crumpled it up, and tossed it in my locker. I ran late to the class with Ashlyn in it, so I ended up sitting in the front and not next to her. When class ended, she seemed to leave pretty quickly, but didn't act like her normal self. She stopped and talked to Sydney and they just looked at me as I walked by. I was thinking maybe she realized she went too far so I felt no reason to say anything and carried on. That wouldn't stop it though. Not only did I continue to get notes, but they got more aggressive like, I miss you when you avoid me, it makes me sad, things like that. Then I started getting texts. I had limited text and talk at the time, so if I went over too many or got close, my parents made sure to tell me. So at first when I got something saying, hey cutie, I was fine with it. I asked who it was and they just said, your secret admirer. I asked if it was the same person that sent the notes and they said yes. They asked me if I liked them, and that's when I said the one on the outside was too much and kind of weird, and they apologized and said it wouldn't happen again, and I left it at that, thinking, hey, now we don't have to mention it in person and be weird about it. They started asking more about me and would carry on for the next few weeks. I told them I was limited on time so we could always hang out together instead, and they said this was easier for them, so I agreed, but still said I was limited. That didn't stop the texts or even calls I would get in the middle of class while eating dinner with my family at midnight when I was trying to sleep. When they did call, I answered a few times, but they just sat there silently. It was just weird, but also frustrating because I didn't expect this from Ashlyn. Or at least, she didn't seem the clingy type. But as time went on, the calls and texts continued, and I even started getting pictures of myself again, on the track field with another risque text. At one point, 
I had to pair up for another project in another class, and the girl I was paired with was sent a threatening letter about staying away from their man or else she would get hurt. She asked to be paired with someone else, and then I have to have a meeting with a teacher asking who I was with because it was going to be a problem, and she had a hard time believing me and explained the note to me. I was already getting annoyed. My parents got on to me about my phone time, the notes and guilt trips from someone I wasn't even dating were getting old, and now she's threatening people and saying we're dating? All of this, and she won't even hardly talk to me outside of class. Why would you pretend to be my girlfriend then? So I decided to confront her about it. I went to the class we were both in, walked past her desk as she motioned for me smiling. I just looked past her and sat elsewhere. I looked over at her once when she wasn't and she looked nervous. Then when class ended, I approached her and as she started saying something, I cut her off and told her to knock it off. I told her some things along the lines of, I don't know how you got my number, but lose it. You are insane and way too dramatic and way too clingy. You are not the person I thought you were, and I am not interested and never will be interested in you, so leave me alone. I was really, really mean, and to this day, I still feel bad about it. She again turned red and I could see the tears in her eyes and she ran down the hall. She went right past Sydney who I could tell was pretty pissed at me and ran after her. I went through the rest of the day not hearing or seeing her but I felt horrible. I tried to contact her at that number that texted me but no response. I tried texting Sydney and she actually demanded we talk about it, so I called her. I started telling her about everything, and she seemed so dumbfounded by it all, like she had never heard of any of this. Being such good friends with her, it was hard to believe. However, she explained to me that she asked Ashlyn on several occasions if she wanted my number, but she always said no, because she wanted to get it from me. Then how did she get my number? I told her about the notes and she said she knew she sent one but it just had her number on it and she taped it on the outside but I never got that one. She said she remembered the one of me taped on the outside and she had talked to Ashlyn about it because she was upset thinking I was seeing someone and that thought started to solidify since I didn't sit by her that day and going forward. As we talked more the things I told her about, she swore Ashlyn didn't do or wouldn't do. So then I argued, who else would do it then? And we had no idea. That's when Sydney got a call from Ashlyn. So she said she would call me back. She did tell Ashlyn she wanted to hang out with her that day to talk about things, but that she wanted me to be there too to figure things out. I was hesitant, but agreed. She lived a few blocks over, so I just walked over there, and Ashlyn ended up getting dropped off there. I stayed out back playing with her little brother while they talked, and then she came and got me. I was glad Sid was so quick on things because that prompt meetup really cleared things up. Ashlyn told Sydney what happened, and then she came and got me, and Ashlyn looked horrified that I was there. Before she could take off, though, Sydney stopped her and explained to her what was happening. I helped explain the details and confirmed it all, and by the look on her face, it told me that none of this was her. Yet, she was still apologizing. I should have been the only one apologizing because I had gone off on her, and thankfully, she accepted and understood. The mystery was still there, though. Who the hell was behind all of this? That's when Sydney explained why she had her come over. Ashlyn had gotten a threatening text saying to stay away from me or she would get beat. However, this person was dumb enough to use the same number they were texting me from, pretending to be Ashlyn. So who was it? Sid grabbed their home phone and started calling the number. A guy answered the phone at first, but Sydney, being the genius she is, 
told them, yeah, I missed a call from this number, but I don't know who this is. I go to name of high school. Then the guy that answered yelled, Jocelyn, someone from school is on the phone. That's when we heard shuffling, and then the call was disconnected. And then it all started to make sense. At least, some. It was my friend Jocelyn. She was pretending to be Ashlyn, semi-stalking me at the field and in my classes, which would make sense since she was in the class where I was paired up with that girl that changed partners. She probably took the note off my locker with Ashlyn's number, getting hers, and then writing all the other ones, which made her look crazy. To do what? Drive me away from her, I guess? Sydney didn't really know much about Jocelyn, but left me to confront her instead, and I again apologized to both of them. They told me to stay and hang out, but I was feeling guilty and awkward, so I just left. I wanted to take care of things with Jocelyn anyways. I got home and called her number that I had saved and learned that it had been disconnected, so it would seem she got a new number and decided to use it to her advantage. It wasn't all that interesting when she was confronted, though. It was before school started, while we were waiting for class to start. Words were said, and I think I sufficiently embarrassed her, too. We don't talk anymore, but she did start dating one of my friends, which, I mean, more power to them, I suppose, keeps her occupied, but me and Ashlyn turned out fine. We started hanging out more and actually started dating too. She teases me about it at times, but I was just glad to move past it. If I never have a weird stalker or crush again, it would be too soon. For the record, I am a 26-year-old woman now. And this all happened back when I was 13, so in 2011. I was meeting up with a friend of mine at a strip mall, and we were supposed to go to the movies. I don't even know what we were going to see, I just remember we were excited because we were going to be going alone for the first time. My parents were more strict than hers, so we told them that it was going to be the two of us and her dad, but her parents really didn't care which, looking back, isn't something that should be celebrated. For us, it was a huge deal, because we hadn't done anything with just the two of us, and we were feeling like we were super grown up. So we were dropped off at the movie theater, with cash to buy the tickets and some popcorn, and basically told to have a good night and that they would be back in a few hours to pick us up. We got inside the theater and got our tickets to whatever movie we were going to see, we had about half an hour before the movie started, so we decided to check out the little arcade, mostly to play Pac-Man. We spent the cash that we had left playing games, and the whole time we were in there, there was a guy that was just standing outside the door and staring into the arcade. It really didn't bother me because I thought that he was looking at the games, and I didn't really think he was doing anything too far out there. But I noted that he was there and just kind of kept it in the back of my mind that he was. After around 15 or so minutes of playing the games, the guy that was standing there finally walked into the arcade and kind of walked over to where we were standing, but again didn't say anything. It was at this point that I noticed that he had a young boy with him that was probably 6 or so years old, which made me realize that he was definitely not paying attention to us. He was just looking around. He walked over to where we were and was kind of hovering with his little kid. And after watching me play Pac-Man for a few minutes, he made a comment about how great it was to see someone of my generation playing the classics. I said thanks to him and mentioned that Pac-Man had been my favorite game for a long time and mentioned that it was because of my dad that I played it at all. After a bit of us all just kind of standing there, we decided that we needed to get to the movie. I mentioned that we had to go and told him that it was all his. We left and went to watch the movie. About halfway through the movie, I really needed to head to the restroom, which was pretty on par for me. 
I have a small bladder and I have a bad habit of drinking soda way too fast. So I told my friend and decided to just run to the restroom really quick. I got up and exited out into the hallway when who should I run into but the guy that was in the arcade with his kid. Again, he had a six-year-old boy with him, so I wasn't thinking much of him, but he waved and smiled at me and made a joke like, long time no see. I chuckled and said, yep, and then kept on to the restroom. I got in and went into the stall to do my business when I heard the door opening slowly and the sound of someone stepping into the restroom. Now, this was a public restroom, so someone else entering a few minutes after I did wasn't something that was cause for alarm. For some reason, though, I was feeling super uneasy about it. It was like my mind was telling me that there was something going on, despite the fact that there was no reason for me to believe that there was any cause for alarm. I was just sitting there and kind of peering through the cracks in the stall to see if I could see who had entered in the bathroom mirror. When my irrational fear was confirmed as not so irrational, I saw that man, the one with the little boy, walking slowly into the women's restroom and looking around. My heart was racing. This was the kind of thing that my nightmares were made of. No adult man would be walking into the women's restroom like that, especially when they knew that there was a teenage girl in said restroom unless they had malicious intent. The span of 30 seconds between him entering and this situation coming to an end felt like hours. Thankfully, the man's little boy opened the door and shouted, Daddy, this is the girl's bathroom. As soon as he did, the man quickly turned around and ran back out to the hallway. I just sat there silently holding my breath while my heart exploded out of my chest for several seconds then finished my business and very swiftly made my exit. I practically ran back to the showing room and back to my seat. I was terrified that this guy was going to follow me and try to corner me. Thankfully, I didn't see him the rest of the night, but I think my friend could tell that something was going on. I never told her about it because I didn't want her to freak out, and I obviously never told my parents about it. I know that this whole situation could have gone much worse, and I know that if his son hadn't intervened, this would have ended differently. Ever since that night, I've actually had a fear of going anywhere alone, and I have to have someone with me anytime I'm in public. I'm glad it just ended quickly and without incident, and in the 10 years since then, I'm glad that guy and I never met again. So that, my friends, was a collection of stalker stories. Again, a collection of people being weird and doing weird things. And otherwise, I'm at a loss of what to say. It never fails. There's at least one. I don't know. Uh, Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like below. And if you'd like to hear more content like this, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And lastly, don't forget to leave me a comment on your thoughts or let me know what's going on this week. How's it going for you? With that being said, friends, I hope you have a fantastic week and until next time, take care.